Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth is going on here? Why would God have Ezekiel speak to mountains? And say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you. Battle, war, conflict. And I will destroy your high places, and your altar shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before your idols. Okay. Jeremiah tells us that in every road and in the temple itself, they had devised altars, they have got idols and images set up all over Jerusalem. Ezekiel tells us that out in the, the boondocks, out in the mountains, the valleys, the hills, and the rivers, they got the altars there too. They got idols out there. And there are people who say, well, I can worship God while I'm out fishing and hunting. Yeah, and that's exactly what Judah is doing today. And Ezekiel, I mean. Today, as, as Ezekiel's being written. And the problem is, when you're out there in the woods, you're hunting and fishing, you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping the idols. The deer, the fish, the fishing rod, the boat, the gun, and, and not God. And what has been carried over in the city is being carried over out in the woods, out in nature. So as God is going to set forth to destroy Jerusalem, the, the temple and all, and he does, there's also the, the, the worship of gods and goddesses out in nature. Today we would say save the whales, Mother Earth, and uh, Mother Nature, and El Nemo, and El Environmental, and nothing's changed. Those high places are the places that men built to worship the gods. I will lay your dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols. So what's happening is, we don't have a God that just sends lightning bolts. There's a purpose. And the anger is against those that are worshiping idols and images and high places and gods and goddesses. Well, let's bring it up to date in America. There's a church that has idols and images aids to worship. There are Baptist churches that worship gods in the name of Esther and Christmas, Tamu. There are all kinds of gods all over the place, especially today, to describe all the natural events as El Nemo, global warming, the hole in the ozone layer, climate change. God's not getting the credit he deserves. And then in the public school system, it's the monkey man, the big bang, the evolution, Charles Darwin. Not in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. 
And with all this worships of gods and goddesses out in nature in Ezekiel and in the city of Jeremiah, America and all the worldwide places are going to get their conflict with an angry God who do not worship God, but worship gods and goddesses. And the God and goddesses of, well, well yeah, actually goddesses, Susan B. Anthony, uh, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Lady Liberty, all the things that are found on your U.S. money. That's not God. He said, well, that's just Israel. Did not God say as the nation of Egypt that every one of those plagues were upon the gods of the Egyptians? I will scatter your bones round about your altars. So, not only are you going to die, carcass, death, but something's going to happen that your bones are going to be separated from each other. They're, they're not going to be together. And where your altars are, there's your dead bones. You know, every Catholic altar has a form of a relic, and sometimes it's bones. There's... One Catholic church, they supposedly have the breast milk of Mary. Disgusting. Honest, there's a Catholic church that has, actually there's two Catholic churches that have the skulls, they claim, of John the Baptist. And somebody said, well, wait a minute, how can you have a skull of John the Baptist here and skull of, of John the Baptist there? Was he a two-headed freak? No. And the Catholic Church answer to that, this is history. Well, they've got the, the skull of the baby, John the Baptist. We've got the skull of the adult, John the Baptist. And it was, it was born, okay. And that there is a Catholic Church where they got a feather of Michael. And the Pope throne. In Rome is to said to be built upon the bones of the Apostle Peter. Nonsense. The very fact is, do you realize when God says, I'm going to scatter your bones around your altars, as far as the Jew and his law, death was an unclean. And when you got a dead body, laying on the ground, laying on the altar, laying out, you and that were unclean. And that they would have a thing called the water of separation. And that for a Jew, it was the utmost to have a burial. In all your dwelling places in the cities, okay, here we with the cities, shall be laid waste, Jerusalem and Judah, and neighboring cities. Jeremiah tells us, Lamentations tells us it happened. High places shall be desolate. High places are places that people built for, we're going to get to God. <laughs> or we're going to get up and worship the hosts of heaven. The Tower of Babel and, and Genesis, they didn't build it to get to God. Read it. They said, let's make a tower so all the world will see us. You mean like the Eiffel Tower? You mean like the World Trade Tower? You mean like the Empire State Building? You mean like the Sears Tower? You mean like all these, these, these high rises that are built for the strategy of men, look who we are, and it's not to get to God? You mean the, the, the erected of, uh, of steeples in church buildings? Let's go to a high place that the church does not meet in the steeple. Then what is the steeple built for? 
When a hunter goes out in the woods and he's got he's got his 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 tree pole stand sitting there and like he really gives God the glory and credit when he takes down an animal? Really? Sure. Every boy wants a tree house. Man wants to get in spaceships and go to the moon and go to Mars and go into outer space. High places. A new place, a high place, was the fact is we had the International Space Station circling around the globe and now we got Mars. Those are high places of no credit and no authorship to the Almighty God. You can't have a, a space program given to God the Father and Jesus Christ when you name it the dragon. And you got Baptist preachers, oh, isn't that so great? Isn't that our space program? Wait a minute, it's called dragon. Did you miss the reference in Revelation that you went through and studied? That's a ball of fire going up in the... Ooh, oh. That your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, empty, nothing, no value. They were no value in the first place. And your idols may be broken and cease. Well, that's definitely not Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Ezra, Nehemiah, because those idols are still around today. And they are, some of them idols, believe it or not, are in your Baptist churches. Esther. Easter, you know her name as. She's the idol that's got all the boobies in shape of eggs. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I, 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 Resurrection Sunday, though it's not three days and three nights after the Passover. This has to be a second advent reference. Because those idols, those images, are in the book of Revelation in the tribulation period. And their images may be cut down. Now an idol is a stone, wood, plastic, upright, and it doesn't have to be a man. It could be a monkey. It can be a... a, 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 a a square going off with a tapered end. You know, like the Washington Monument. You know, they, they call that the phallic symbols. The symbol of the male penis. They can also be when you go up north in America and you can see four faces in stone. The founding fathers. Not once did you even think about having a prophet in the Bible up there. Or Moses. Or Elijah. No, you had to have the great American. And one is the, the Declaration of Independence. One is the, the government. Nonsense. And you can have natural ones as those giant sequoia trees in California that they put tin, for, tin all around to prevent them from the forest fires. What did you do to protect the people's houses? In your eyes, it could be busts, it could be statues. You'll find them in museums. You even find them in Baptist churches. I know you'll find them in a Catholic church, but there are, there are in some Baptist churches, you know, they're, they're our founding father of our church. And then images are paintings, drawings, art. And I've seen them in Baptist churches. Maybe cut down and your works be abolished. 
You know, we, we know what the word abolish means. You know, we abolish safe slavery. No, you didn't. There's still slavery in the, in the world today. How about abolish religion? Oh, no, no. The Constitution said we got the freedom of religion. Then why is it the city of Daytona Beach is trying to stop my religious rights of proclaiming Jesus Christ? Why can't you just leave it alone? And the slain shall fall in the midst of you. And the you is the mountains, the valleys, the rivers. It's going to defile the land of Jewish people. Now this is what Nebuchadnezzar is going to do. This is what the Nazis did. This is what the Antichrist is going to do with Jewish bodies. They're going to be just killed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When your religion, your God and goddesses have been defeated, Egypt never learned that. They still got their gods and goddesses. I will leave a redmond. That means a, 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 a leftover people. Not everybody's going to be killed. So that violates the God's all finished with Israel. If God is all finished with Israel, why didn't he wipe them out totally? Why do we have the story of Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Zephaniah, and Zechariah? And the prophets that worked with and of Ezra and Nehemiah in their books to say, hey, why aren't you building a temple? If God was all finished with the Jews, how come Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo got victory over Nebuchadnezzar? And they weren't changed to Babylonians. They, weren't get, they didn't get their names fully changed to Babylonians. And some shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall scatter through the countries. So see, that's not just Babylon. And yet they tried to go to Edom, they tried to go to Moab, they went down to Egypt. And they that escaped of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they, sh whether they shall be carried captive. Because I've broken with their whorish heart. God likens the religion and the worship of gods and goddesses as whores. If you have a god or a goddess in your life, even as a Christian, God says you're a whore. Because you pay somehow for that God or Goddess. You give time. Which have departed from me. And with their eyes. Which go a whoring. After their idols. The Roman Catholic Church has idols. That's why she's called the whore. In Revelation. There's your definition. Scripture with Scripture. Her idols make her the whore. Over a half of your Roman Catholics, your true dedicated Roman Catholic, will be having an idol between their boobs. And it will be the cross. Or they'll have the cross with Jesus Christ nailed to it. That's an idol. The Baptist church has an idol. They all got the crosses hanging all over the place. Well, thank God Jesus Christ wasn't put into the lecture chair. They would have the lecture chairs on the back wall of their churches. 
And they sing the song, I will cherish the old rugged cross. No, I don't tr cherish the old rugged cross. I don't cherish the torture device of Jesus. I cherish Jesus who was tortured for my sin. And they have, wherever city is, I don't care, but where that song was written, they erected an old wooden cross. Idolatry. Idolatry. I don't sing that up there. There are many hymns that if a church say, I don't sing. That's one of them. Because if you cherish the old rugged cross, that's idolatry. Why not cherish the, the, the thorns upon the crown of Jesus' head? Why not cherish the, the cat of nine tails? There are Baptists actually think that somewhere in heaven there's a cross. There's no cross. And you make fun of the Catholics and their idolatry. Your cross is an idolatry. I mean, there are some things that Jehovah Witnesses have correct. Now, Jehovah Witnesses don't worship the cross because they say it was a stake. They're wrong. But I'll tell you another idolatry of America. America and with Baptists, your American flag is idolatry. And I just lost a lot of friends. I don't care. Because I don't see the American flag in New Jerusalem. You are to respect and honor the American flag more than you are to respect and honor the King James Bible. And not even many Baptists hold to the King James Bible. You are not to let the flag of America touch the ground. And yet, how many Bibles have I seen go flying off the trunk and the roof and the hood of cars going down the church, leaving church service? And I had a Christian come up to me and goes, yeah, I've seen that many times. Try that with, a, try that with, the, with the flag. You're going to realize when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to find out you have a lot of idol idols in your heart. And they will be cleansed by fire, and you will lose rewards. And you don't like what I say? Well, I think God likes what I say, and I think God approves of what I say, and I don't think he approves of you. And if I'm wrong, then I'll face the wrong at the judgment seat of Christ. And they shall know that I am the Lord. You know, that expression is quite much in Ezekiel. And I'll, if I remember, I'll mark it again the next time. Well, actually, let's do it like this. I'll do it right now. In Ezekiel, We'll do a search right now. Give me a moment. And when when we study these all out, do you realize all the consequences that God will do that you shall know that He is the Lord? Coming up. They clean my computer and stew So well, uh, that's working. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Oh, now I can't. And that ye, I'm trying to see my screen. And that ye have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. God wouldn't do this to us. Fifty-one times the expression shall know that I am the Lord and Ezekiel alone. And the first time it shows up in Ezekiel 6 7. We set off the beginning of 51 times, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. What's the first time? 
at your altars, at your idols, and at your images, there'll be dead men. What is God saying? I believe God sometimes is a practical joker. That God's going to be up in heaven at these dead bodies laughing. You say, oh, well, how can you be so cruel? Did your gods and your goddesses protect you? Where are they? Come on, Satan. And then turn and say, come on, Satan, how come you didn't protect your people? And then when you go over to the book of Psalms, you will read, eyes they see not, ears they hear not, mouths they speak not, nothing comes out of their throat, hands they can't handle not, feet they cannot walk not. <laughs> and you can't say God is cruel because he sent Ezekiel and he sent Jeremiah and he sent Isaiah. Will you get right and repent? You know, I guarantee reading the book of Revelation, I guarantee those four faces on Mount Rushmore will fall one day. I guarantee the, the Mount Rushmore, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the, the Washington Monument is going to fall over. Abraham Lincoln won't be sitting in Washington, D.C. Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ that comes back on a horse. The Eiffel Tower will be destroyed. Leaning Tower of Pisa will fall over. Big Ben will crumble. But Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, will last forever. And along with him that will last forever, the King James Bible, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That's how much I'm a King James believer. I believe that's the King James Bible. I believe it's the Geneva Bible. I believe it's the Bibles that run all the way back to Antioch, not Alexandria. Wouldn't it be great for the great modern Bible person of Alexandria? When we get to heaven, there will be a museum of the family line of the King James Bible. Right next to the King James Bible, Geneva. The Geneva Bible is the blood of the martyrs. When, the, when they died by the word of God, they died under the Geneva Bible, which the blood of the Geneva Bible, who King James' own family suffered by blood, suffered by the torture of the church, came up with, hey, let's put it in English. And then you run Tyndale and you run all the families. Maybe in that museum, maybe you'll have the originals. The original autographs of Paul and Peter and Jesus and Matthew and all that. What God is doing to Israel, now watch. What God is doing to Israel, he did to Egypt. Every one of those plagues upon Egypt was a god of Egypt. The Nile River is a god to the Egypt. The, 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 the mammon and the anthrax of the animals was to their medical god. And you can look it up. Chick Track has a track dedicated to the gods of Egypt. The god of fish. The god of the crops. The god of darkness. The god of sun. God is doing what he did in Egypt to what he's doing in Israel because Israel should have known. The gods of Egypt did not protect Egypt. How do you think the gods of Cana and all the nations around you, how do you think they're going to protect you? You know, America and, and Christians go into, we're going to have a national day of prayer in America. Wait a minute, hold on. Who's going to be involved in this prayer? Well, the Pentecostals, the Baptists, the Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Congregation. Are some of these religions where they have as the office of the head of their church a sodomite? Oh yeah, the Presbyterian. Are you telling me you're going to rely on everybody getting together and all their sins and all their idols and all their images and all their sodomite and all their wickedness and all their Bibles 
You're going to say, if we get together in unity of God, that God's going to hear our prayer nationwide? They actually believe that because they still say, God bless America. From sea to shining sea. We don't even know it's an ocean. You're stupid. When I hear that, from sea to shining, I was like, you idiots, it's an ocean. But you're stealing from, you're stealing from, uh, I've gone off on a rabbit trail, you're stealing from Israel. Well, how can you say that, Stanley? Because if you go from sea to shining sea, you go from the Dead Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, and in between that land is Israel. Replacement theology. God ain't going to bless you for that. Thus saith the Lord God. Now he's talking to Ezekiel. Smite with thy hand and stamp with thy foot. Can you picture it with that? I know you can't see me doing my... And can you just see people watching Ezekiel? <laughs> Ezekiel's a trip to the people what God has him do. That's God telling Ezekiel, okay, do so. Yeah, not only do you lay on your right side, not only do you lay on your left side, not only do you get the little army man in the pan, not only are they going to tie you, not only is your mouth going to be, your tongue is going to be stuck to the rope of your mouth, you're going to be done unless I tell you to speak. And not only are you going to have your food by rations and your water by <laughs> And then turn to the mountains and preach to them. And then like today, people at the park, you're scolding at it. I can imagine what, what God told Ezekiel to do. And say, alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by sword, by famine, and by pestilence. Okay, let's bring that up to date. There are at least, there are, according to the Bible, there are at least two more world wars, at least. We are going into famine now. People are not working at their jobs now. People are getting fired because they won't take the vaccine. They did a survey of Americans, and they learned that Americans said they would rather quit their job than be qu than be fired and then not take the vaccine. Well, if nobody's working in America, there's going to be no food. Prepare. The stubbornness of America is going not to be putting any food on your plate. And by pestilence, we see that already today. It's called COVID-19, and it's called the Delta variant. And I even heard now there's another variant going around. He that is far off shall die by pestilence. Now we're talking about the Jews. So if you're not in the land of Israel, you're going to get pestilence. He that's near shall fall by the sword. It would be the sword of the Babylonians and Chaldeans. And he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by famine, that is Lamentations. Remember the other night we went to Lamentations and there were women eating their babies as soon as they're born. Thus will I, God, accomplish my theory upon them. We are seeing the anger of God in the world. Then shall ye know, number two of 51, I am the Lord. Sword, famine, 
and pestilences to show, hey, that's God. The people in Daytona Beach don't believe that. We still want you gone. We don't want your Jesus. Why not you have an ecumenical union with us and come join us? Because you won't allow me to preach Jesus. You won't allow me to have religion. And I can't have the freedom that I am doing what I'm doing today. Was it Amos that they said, Amos, don't preach here? Go somewhere else and preach? When their slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars. Oh, that's a great church service. Hey, you know, my friend invited me to church. Opens up the church and there's a bunch of dead bodies. Oh, this is a dead church. Yeah, God says, by that you will know I am God, and that's not God. These cults where they found many people dead and Kool-Aid and, and guns and all that, that's to show, you know what, their God is not God. Upon every high hill where they're worshiping gods in nature, in all the tops of the mountains, this is, goes back to verse 1 and 2 and 3, that's where they went to get to the stars and under every green tree <laughs> oh Christmas tree oh Christmas tree how we truly adore you now, every other green tree those are the ones who didn't want to kill the trees or bring it in the house they kept the trees out in the out in the forest And under every thick oak. Be careful of oaks in the Bible. Now I'm not going to say it's scripture, but if, if I was a gambling man, I'm not a gambling man, but I would, I would truly put the odds that the cross that Jesus died on was an oak. And every oak has a corn. And Jesus said, uh, I'm not going to quote it completely, but lest a, a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it won't bear seed. The place where they did offer sweet Savior to all their idols. <laughs> Thought they were supposed to give it to God. They weren't giving it to God. The law completely forbade them to worship anywhere they felt like it. They were to go to Jerusalem. But when they went to Jerusalem, they saw everything. And go, eh, just keep it home. You know, I don't have to go to church. I'll just stay home and watch it on Facebook. And there are pastors out there. Well, you know, my church congregation are faithfully watching me on faith. And, and the, a couple of these, these Christian magazines, I, I don't. But the, the surveys say they don't watch their church service. If they do watch their church service, they never watch it to the fullest. So I will stretch out my hand upon them and make the land desolate. Lamentations. Yea, more dis desolate than the wickedness toward Dibla and all their inhabitants. Number three. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. What's number th Number one was all the dead bodies at the idols and images. Number two, ye shall know that I am the Lord. Sword, famine, and pestilence. And number three, you shall know that I am the Lord. The land of Judah will be desolate. I'm going to stop there until I feel this need.